to him and his wife. Shh. Because she hates uh, women. Yeah, he does. Any ideas what might have happened, though? Maybe he cheated. She cheated on him. Okay, maybe she cheated on him. He married with her. Say that again. He married her. He did marry her. He did. He did. Terrence, what do you think? What do you think possibly is going on with Mr. Williams here? Yeah, I think something very strong happened to him because of his wife, because he said that uh, he did something like, uh, I don't know how I don't kill every every woman I see on the street. So he hates not a woman, he hates all the women. So uh, yes, I agree with Christoph and other guys that think that uh, his wife cheated on him and made him a cuckold. A cuckold, uh huh, a cuckold, uh huh, a cuckold, uh huh. Yep, a cuckold, mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a good possibility. Do you think anything else could have possibly happened that makes him feel this intense hatred for women? Or do you think that's kind of as bad as it can get for a man, for a woman to, to cheat on them? I think he's take he's taking all this uh, uh, all this uh, in a very bad way, not in a sporting way. I think he's uh, he's he he needs he needs to overcome his 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 past. Maybe talking with the with George Willard, maybe he's going to overcome uh, the failure of his marriage. But I am not sure because he really hates women. Yeah, he does, and we. And we've also seen, um, just from Sherwood Anderson's writing style, he's not really one for happy endings either. <laughs> so. No, no, and and and, he, and Sherwood Anderson likes to go straight to the point. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like to get around the bushes. Yeah, beat beat around the bush. Be, beat, beat around, around the, bush. the bush. Beat around so. the bushes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and the people in Winesburg seem to have a hard time overcoming bad things that have happened to them in the past. I mean, we just got done reading about Alice, Alice Hindman, you know, and she just is not able to, was not able to overcome um, the whole deal with Ned Curry leaving her and never coming back for her. So, um, you know, she even tried to go streaking and that didn't even work. So, um, you know, there's these, these people here have a, um, have a hard time with with overcoming these things for sure um but that's life for me that's life and and this author is. this author is is putting the spying glass on this kind of people nobody no, yep. no one before talk about these people nobody oh no. Be, no 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 nobody talk about well maybe john stain but no john stain is mm -hmm. later but mm -hmm. uh, but I, I I like because real people have real di, real problems and and in real situation you have this problem. No, you have to deal with this problem all the time. But you don't have to to be left consumed by the hate. You you have to yeah. overcome the past. You have to keep moving to go on to to, yeah. to face your life and and to put right the things that are broken. But keep moving. Go on. Do you think that some people genuinely do have a really hard time with that, though? That some people are really incapable of yeah. moving on? Yeah. 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 But, you know, uh, you know uh, Terrence has a good point, though. Sherwood Anderson recognized that, that the world is full of people like that, but nobody talked about that back then. You know, and even nowadays we sometimes have discussions about about it, but not very often, even even in today's society. Um, you know, and back then, never, never, ever, ever, ever. Taboo. Say taboo. that again, Christoph. Because of taboo. Yes, yes, because of taboo. Yes, it was very taboo. Yes, and all these people's lives were very taboo. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, tonight, I, 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 I would like to share with you and with the other. If do you know long day's journey into the night? 
the play written by the Eugene O'Neill with I've heard of it I've never okay. read it, it, that, it. That, that is that is another dysfunctional family uh, the mother is a drug addict the one son is going to die because he's, he has tuberculosis mm. the other is a gigolo a, a drunk gigolo oh, wow. and, and, uh, and the father is, is, is mean, you know what, what, what you know it's mean he, 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 he doesn't spend any money he hasn't spent ever any money on, on his family so not on food, not on, on uh, medicines he never take care of his own family so in that play uh, his family is falling apart and oh. there are so many open wounds there are do you understand open wounds uh -huh. so yep. so it's we it, oh, it's, it's it's amazing because they are they are they have a very they are telling each other dirty words about you didn't take care of me you didn't pay for my school you didn't I take care of mama uh, I am a drunkard because of your fault father because you never really love us so so I mean I think th that kind of problem is in our real life mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's not an obsess but it's, it's, a, it's a very good thing that someone talks about this uh, problem because yes. we will f we will be free to talk about our problems and mm -hmm. to try to overcome. If, if no one talk about our real problems, we are not going to feel confidence to express to other people. Right, and it's always about pointing fingers. It's your fault, you know, nobody ever yeah. takes responsibility or people don't want to take yeah. responsibility for their own actions. It's, you know, yeah. well, or, I'm this way because you did this or I'm this way because you did this. Yeah, so. try to face the problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, people run away. People run away from it. So, I think yeah. that one of the problems of this guy because he can he cannot uh, he must be able to overcome his problem and that because he is how, how it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's never faced it. He's never faced what happened between him and his wife. And obviously, he just blames his wife. You know, you know, it's her fault. You know. Um, for any, any of you who are married, have been married or whatnot, it takes two to make a marriage work. You know, yes, one person can do a terrible thing in a marriage or whatnot, but it takes two people to make a marriage succeed, and it takes two people to make a marriage fail. There's no other way around it. So, um, but, you know, this happens. I have, I have a set of friends who are going through a divorce right now. And both of them are, you know, saying, you know, the husband's saying it was her fault. She's saying it was the husband's fault. Neither one of them are taking responsibility for what they did to make that marriage fail. Because both of them did bad, rotten things. But they don't want to take responsibility for that. They just want to blame the other person. And just Wash Williams... Just because, the fact is, it, just because the fact it's a couple, it's not the blame, the, the, the fault of the one, one of them. It's, uh, right. Yeah, and Wash Williams obviously looks at the failure of his marriage as it was all his wife's fault. He doesn't even acknowledge that perhaps he had something to do with that. So, yeah, absolutely. You need a third person. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, let's see. Um, Boo Baker, do you want to read? Or do you want to yeah, smoke? <laughs> sure, I can. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, let me give you the link. What What will happen tonight if uh, if this guy uh, suffer from sexual impotence? That maybe maybe that's why his wife went looking elsewhere. You know. No, no. But, I, but after all, I after all the things I have said. Maybe I was thinking, oh, what, what what would happen if the problem is not in her wife? What the what if the problem was in it's true. It's, the problem is him? Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you know, he was, you know, and he was. We know that he was also very good looking at some point. Yeah, but so when if he, he was, if he, he was, was young. yeah, so if he was impotent or is impotent. And he was really good looking and couldn't do anything about his, you know, sexual desires, then 
you can see how that would start to weigh on somebody's emotion for sure. But again, it's all in how you deal with it, and obviously he's not dealing with it the right way. So I think Terence is cheating. He read the rest. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, Boo Baker, um, go ahead and read the next two paragraphs for me. Next two paragraphs. Start yeah. from the first or after the Yeah. Paragraph? Yeah, from the first one. Uh-huh. Uh, how frightened and yet, and yet, what's that word? Fascinated. Fascinated by the light burning in the eye. Of the highest old man, George Wollier listened afar with a curiosity. Curiosity, darkness came on, and he leaned for forward, trying to see the face of the man who, who talked. When in the gathering darkness, he could no longer see the purple. Uh, bloated face and burning eye, a curious fantasy come to to him. Wash William talk it in the low, even tones that made his words seem the more terrible. In the darkness, the young reporter, reporter found himself imagining that he sat on the real road uh, tied beside uh, a camely, a camely young man with the black hair and the black, uh, shining eye, eyes. There was something almost beautiful in the in the voice of Wish, Wash William, uh, the Hydus telling his story of heat. The telegraph, the telegraph uh, op operator of uh, Weins Weinsberg sitting in the darkness on the rail railroad ties had became a boat. Hatred has raised him to that uh, elevation. It is became, I saw you kissing the lips of that uh, Bill uh, Carpenter that uh, I tell you my story. He said, what happened to me uh, my next happen uh, to you. Uh, I want to put uh, to put you on your uh, word. Uh, already you might be having dream in your head. I want to destroy them. Good, awesome. Okay, so um, George, how does George feel thus far about Wash Williams telling him his story? He's quite he was afraid. He's yeah. He's kind of afraid, but what? But other than being afraid, how else does he feel? Curiosity, curiosity. curiosity. Yeah, he's curious. He's fascinated by this. He's really, you know, I, and I, I have to admit, I would be too. If somebody went off on a tangent saying how every woman is dead, or you know, all of this, I might be really curious to know more about why this person feels that way. Um. He knows that he's sitting next to a really ugly old man, but how does George begin to imagine Wash Williams? Uh, imagine him Good sitting in the, in the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, 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 more so than that. He imagine him a good-looking young, young man. Yeah, he starts to imagine him as as the young man that he once was, the good-looking young man that he once was. Why is Wash Williams deciding to tell George all of this? To hurt him. To to do what? To warn him about the. Yeah, to warn him about what? About what happened to him. The children. Mm -hmm. To, the, yeah, to warn him about evil women, you know, to, to, to try to convince him that being with a woman is, you know, that's not the way to go. Um, he saw George kissing 
Bell Carpenter. So he sees this desire in George to be with women, and um, Wash Williams thinks it's up to him to squelch it, you know, put his thumb on it and kill it, kill any desire that he might have for women. Um, whoops. Terrence, let's have you read the next two paragraphs for us. Okay, from Wash Williams began telling. Yes. Okay, sorry. Wash Williams began telling the history of his married life with the tall blonde girl with the blue eyes whom he had met when he was a young operator at Dyson, Ohio. Here and there, his story was touched with moments of beauty intermingled with the strings of vile curses. The operator had married the daughter of a dentist who was the youngest of three sisters. On his marriage day, because of his ability, he was promoted to a position as dispatcher at an increased salary and sent to an office at Columbus, Ohio. There, he settled down with his young wife and began buying, buying a house on the installment plan. The young telegraph operator was madly in love with a kind of religious favor he had managed to go through the pitfalls of his youth and to remain virginal until after his marriage. He made for George Williams a picture of his life in the house at Columbus, Ohio, with the young wife. In the garden back of our house, we planted vegetables, he said. You know, peas and corn and such things. We went to Columbus in early March, and as soon as the days became warm, I went to work the garden. With a spade, I turned up the black ground while she ran about laughing and pretending to be afraid of the worms I uncovered. Late in April came the plantain. In the little paths among the seed beds, she stood holding a paper bag in her hand. The bag was filled with seeds. A few at a time, she handed me the seeds that I might thrust them into the warm, soft ground. Good. Okay, so this woman that he married, um, who, what was her background? Where did she come from? What did her dad do? A dentist. A dentist. Did she have any brothers or sisters? Two sisters. Two sisters. And was she, where was... She was, where was the she? youngest. Yep, she was the youngest. And he was really in love with her, but did they have sex before they got married? No. No. No, he, he remained a virgin until after they got married. So he was a virgin um, until they got married. And when they got married, what happened to him with his job? He was promoted. Yeah, he was promoted. And they moved from Dayton to where? Columbus. 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 Yeah, to Columbus. And in Columbus, what did they, what else did they buy? What else happened? They buy a house. Buy a house. Mm -hmm. They settled down. Yeah, they settled down and bought a house. And they actually, um, with the house, they started to do what that he talked about? What did they plant a garden. Yeah, they planted a garden together. They planted a garden together. So, um, does it seem like their life was happy? Yes. No. Seems. Apparently. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> Boo Baker says no. <laughs> at this point, at this point, it was pretty happy. Um, so maybe a little boring for Boo Baker, but it was happy. So, <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Um, hey, Vanessa, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good to see you. Do you want to read this last paragraph for us? Okay. Uh, from for a moment. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay. For a moment, there was a catch in the voice of the man talking in darkness. I loved her, he said. I don't claim not to be a fool. I love her yet. There in the dusk in the spring evening, I crawled along the black ground to her feet and growled before her. I kissed her shoes and the ankles above her shoes. When the hem of the hair garment touched my face, I trembled. 
when after two years of that life I found she had managed to acquire three other lovers who came regularly to our house when I was away at work. I didn't want to touch them on or her. I just sent her home to her mother and said nothing. There was nothing to say. I had $400 in the bank and I gave her that. I didn't ask her reasons. I didn't say anything. When she had gone, I cried like a silly boy. Pretty soon, I had a chance to sell the house, and I sent that money to her. Good. So, what happens? <laughs> Cuckold. <laughs> Cuckolds. Yeah. 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 Three men. So. Three. Yeah, not even one. This girl got around, man. She had three guys come into the house while her husband's away at work. That's terrible. She never had enough. I guess not. Yeah. She was a nympho. Um, so, right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she um, she definitely, definitely uh, hurt him very badly. Now, what's interesting about this... Um, did he try to kill her, the guys that she cheated on him with? No. No. What does he do? He sold the house and spent the whole money. Yeah, he sells the house, he sends her the money, and when he sent her home to her mom, he also sent her with the money that they had in the bank. If if your wife or girlfriend cheated on you, would you give her money? No. <laughs> no. I wouldn't either, to be quite honest. I mean, I'd be like, are you out of your mind? Find your own way. Buy a bus ticket. You know, here's here's a penny. Um, so, yeah, I definitely um, wouldn't do that. Um, but he, he does. Why do you think he does this? Because... Maybe uh, because that's how he rises, you know. He rises as a such a man, like um, okay, like that's one of his uh, attitudes, or like he never left anyone. However, you know, mistake or cheating, she would know that she are, she's cheating later, sooner or later, and she's the one who's who's losing. Okay. Um, does he give her all this money? Why do you think he gives her all this money? Because she, he never wants to see see her again. No. Maybe no. Uh, he. Maybe he wants it to. He actually tells us in a roundabout way why he gave her all this money. It's in the last paragraph, the second line. After he says, I don't claim not to be a fool. I love her yet. He's mm -hmm. still in love with her to this very day that he's telling George Willard this story. He still loves her. He's never gotten over the hurt. He loves her. Um, yeah. This is kind of reminiscent of Alice. Um, and her story about um, about Ned Curry, how she was never able to get over him. I have a friend who was married for like 20 years and found out his wife was cheating on him. And I get so mad at him because they're divorced now and everything, but the dude still loves her. And I'm like, why? Why? She did all these terrible things to you, and he gives her money, and he's, you know, if she ever needs anything, you know, he'll go over to her house, trim her trees, mow her lawn, and I'm like, you're not married anymore. She, you know, she did all these terrible things, and he looks at me, and he just says, Shanae, I still love her, and I'm just like, him. yeah, it's sad. It's very, very sad. Now, he's not like Wash Williams where he hates women because of it. 
And do you really think that Wash Williams hates women? Maybe Why? it's just a reaction and uh, kind of, you know, later he would calm and stop, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like a defense mechanism, you know, because he's, he feels like such a fool for loving this woman and still loving this woman. The only way that he can deal with it is to put off this sense that he hates women. But he doesn't really hate women. So that's pretty clear. He still loves this woman. So, yeah. Maybe she, he hates women because he hates himself for mm -hmm. allowing her, uh, her wife to cheat on him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, for not for not like realizing it sooner, you know, before she had three guys come into the house. Um, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I do think that he hates himself. I, I agree with you, Terrence. I think that there's a lot of Wash Williams that hates himself for what ha he's allowed to happen in his life. For sure. For sure. Um all right, let's see. Let's go ahead and finish this story up. Um, Elson, we're back to okay. you, my friend. Okay. Let's have you read the uh, first three paragraphs of this page. Okay. Wash Williams and George Willard arose from the pile of railroad ties and walked along the tracks towards town. The operator finished his tale quickly, breathlessly. Her mother sent for me, he said. She wrote me a letter and asked me to come to their house at Dayton. When I got there, it was evening about this time. Wash William's voice rose to a half scream. I sat in a parlor of that house two hours. Her mother took me in there and left me. Their house was stylish. They were what I, is called respectable people. There were plush chairs um, and a coach in the room. I was trembling all over. I hated them. I hated the man I thought had wronged her. I was sick of living alone and wanted her back. The longer I waited, the more raw and tender I became. I thought that if she came in and just touched me with her hands, it, I would uh, perhaps faint away. I age to forgive and forget. Good. All right. So um, towards the end of this story, where does Wash Williams go after he has left his wife, pretty much? To her house. Yeah, he goes He goes to her house. And, and um, go ahead. Go ahead, Elson. Yes, uh, I was saying that he went at Dayton at his uh, house. Yeah, yeah, he went. He went to Dayton back to back to her house. And um, these people, do they have money or are they poor? No, they have. They were respectable. They have money. Yeah, they have money. In fact, they're considered respectable people. Respectable people, which is quite interesting. Because generally, people who cheat on their spouses are not known as respectable people. Um, but what does he decide as he's sitting there in the parlor? To forgive her. To forgive her. Yeah, he he wants to forgive her, and more so than just forgive her, what else does he want from her? Forget. Yeah, forget. Well, he wants to forgive and forget what she did. He wants her back. He's yeah. willing to for yeah. In fact, does he even so much does he even really blame her for cheating? No, no. Who does he blame? Himself. No. Man. Mom. Uh, the men. Yeah, the men. He blames the other men, which is 
quite interesting. That's an interesting way to, to look at it. But yeah, he does he does blame the other men. Um, Federico, finish this story off for us. Okay. George Wheeler and the Telegraph operator oh, came. The oh. one above the one above that. Oh, okay. Uh, George uh, Wash William stopped and stood staring at George Wheeler. The boy's body shook as from a chill. Again, the man's voice became soft and low. She came into the room naked. He went on. Her mother did that. While I sat there, she was taking the girl's clothes off, perhaps coaxing her to do it. First, I heard voices at the door that led into a little hallway, and then it opened softly. The girl was ashamed and stood perfectly still staring at the floor. The mother didn't come into the room. When she has pushed the girl in through the door, she stood in the hallway waiting, hoping we would, well, you see, waiting. George Wheeler and the telegraph operator came into the main street of Winesburg. The lights from the store windows light bright and shine on the sidewalk. People move about laughing and talking. The young reporter fell ill and weak. In imagination, he also became old and shapeless. I didn't get the mother killed, say Wash Williams, staring up and down the street. I struck her once with a chair and then the neighbors came in and took it away. She screamed so loud, you see. I won't ever have a chance to kill her now. She died of a fever a month after that happened. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> this is quite an interesting end of a tale. I mean, it's, it's a lot, it reminds me a lot of the tale of adventure that we read um, on Wednesday. Um, not just because we have another naked woman, but um, because of what the implications of this nakedness means. Whose idea was it for the wife to walk into the parlor naked? Her mother. Her mother. Her mom, yeah. What do you think her mom was trying to get out of this? What was she trying to accomplish? What was she, she hoping to get uh, to get her back? Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she thought that if if she sent her daughter in there naked to her husband, to her, her estranged husband, that her husband would be overcome with sexual desire. Yeah. They would have what we call makeup sex and everything would be fixed. Okay. okay. Everything would be fixed. Yeah. Stupid woman. Um <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid woman. Yes, yes, Nasser. Uh, I think now I know why she shaded with other men because she grew up with this woman. Possibly, yeah. Her mm. mom doesn't seem to be very um, chaste or modest, does she? But yeah. he has already says that they are, you know, like polite and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be back then. I mean, this takes place, you know, not long. Yeah. They're supposed to be respectable, yeah. Is this very respectable, what her mother has her doing? <laughs> no. 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 No, not at all. I mean, she should have had her go in there, you know, close, <laughs> you know, in a turtleneck <laughs> up to here and try to make, you know, talk to her husband and, you know, actually have a, have a conversation. How do you think Wash felt when his wife walked into the parlor naked. He saw her as a prostitute again. He was ashamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it did, it, it, you know, um, if he had any sexual desire for her before, that completely killed the mood for him. Because... Mm -hmm. All he saw was her infidelity. 
that she was so willing to give this part of herself to other men. Yeah, he could done with, do it with anyone. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. That she could just be be naked with with anybody. Um, what did he do to the mom? <laughs> he struck her. Yeah, he's pissed. He's not happy with the mom at all. He hits her with the chair. Because he knows, he's at least smart enough to know that this wasn't her idea. In fact, the text describes her as coming in there um, ashamed. Um, you know, it says the girl was ashamed and stood perfectly still staring at the floor. She knew that this wasn't how the, the situation should be handled. She knew that. But she let her mom talk her into it. And Wash knows that it was the mom that was behind this. So he hits her with a chair. I think that's awesome. I can see this, like, totally going down. Um, so who... Let's go back to the idea of Wash Williams hating women. Who was it that really got him to start hating women? The mother. Her, her mother-in-law. Yep. The mother-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. It's the mother-in-law, um, the mother-in-law that, uh, that is really behind this. Um, so that is, that is why, um, that's why he hates women. If the mother-in-law had stayed out of it, do you think things might have turned out differently? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. No? You don't think things would have t turned out differently? I think Why? so. Because he's still in love with her. And he is ready to forgive her to and come back to live together. But his uh, mother-in-law need to uh, want it to uh, to correct their relationship, but she did the opposite thing and destroyed it. Uh, they wouldn't be a, a happy couple, I don't know. Uh, sorry, I have the feeling that uh, uh, Wash didn't make love with his wife enough times. I have the feeling that uh, Wash adored her like a virgin or something like that, like, uh, like an ideal of purity, you know what I mean? But not mm -hmm. like a real woman. Platon love. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be. That could be. We don't know, but that could be. I mean, I, you you had asked, and I I wasn't ignoring you. Sorry, um, Terrence. I did see your question about is he a meek or a eunuch? No, he's not a eunuch, um, or a simpleton, candid, religious man. I don't even think that it's that he's so religious. Um, Remember, he was a virgin when he got married, so perhaps he wasn't very well schooled in the art of lovemaking. Um, you know, that could that could be a possibility. Um, you know, there we all. I mean, everybody I think can can sit here and say that usually when you're not being satisfied at home, that's when you go looking elsewhere. So. Um, and that that could be that could be why um, why this all happened. I don't know. I don't know if he, you know, it does seem that perhaps there was um, a lack of sexual passion on the part of Wash Williams. You know, he was more interested. Um, and usually they accuse women of this. But it seems like he's the one who's more interested in cuddling and, you know, uh, working in the garden together yeah. and those kinds of things. And his wife, you know, is more interested in actually getting it done. In the so, action. Yeah, she, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So there's obviously a disconnect that's going on there. Um, so Yeah, it seems like they won't separate things. Yes. <laughs> Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And and there is too a lack of communication between For the young always. couple. 
Always. Yeah. So they, they, they don't talk each other as the rest of the character we have been reading about. Mm -hmm. This young couple doesn't talk each other about what they want from life, about, about what they expect from their relationship. So it's the lack of communication, uh, the main problem, as always. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, very good, Terrence. Yeah. Yeah, once again, it's lack of communication. Um, and because of that, you know, because of all of these things, now here we have Wash Williams who is leading a very isolated life. You know, he's very isolated, just like a lot of the other characters that we've, that we've read about in Winesburg. It seems always that this lack of communication leads to isolation. So everybody remember that. Um, lack of communication leads to isolation. So don't, don't um, not communicate. Yeah. Can you type it on the chat box? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Lack of communication leads to isolation. That's because every every uh, every chapter we we read before. Start to talk with George Wheeler about stories. Do you think that George, speaking of George Willard, do you it's think like, he's learning anything from all of this? Or what do you think? I mean, what are your predictions on George? He's like a counselor. <laughs> yeah, he's like a shrink, <laughs> right? He's like a psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah. Everybody always tells him his problems. But I don't know. Do you think, do you think he's going to learn anything from all of this? No. Uh, he, he, he accepted. Uh, however, it's a mistake. He accepted. Maybe he would mistake later. <laughs> would, uh, would ask for the same forgiven. So, so, could it? Sorry. No, go ahead, Terrence. Go ahead. No, uh, 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 it's just a quick idea. Could it be George Williams, an incarnation of the author? Say that of uh, the author. Mm -hmm. That's been said. That's been speculated before, but we're not exactly sure. We're not exactly sure. Sherwood Anderson actually gave a talk about that, and he said no. But. I have this quote that I really like. It's by Pablo Picasso. It's, art is the lie we tell to get to the truth. And that could be part of it. I also think that authors have a tendency to lie a lot. Because um, if you read it, it does seem that George Willard is Sherwood Anderson. Terrence, you weren't in my Breakfast at Tiffany's class, but um, Truman Capote claimed that in the book, in the novel, um, that, um, oh, no, I, I can only think of the actor's name, um, that George Peppard's character in the movie, have you ever seen Breakfast at Tiffany's, Terrence? Yeah? Okay. All right. Have you ever read the book? Yes, don't I know. Yes. Okay, so Truman Capote claims that the the young man in the novel is is a homosexual, but I don't buy it for a second. If you really read it, it seems very clear that 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 the young man is very in love with Holly Golightly, but it's unreciprocated love or unrequited love. Holly doesn't love him, but he loves her. But Truman says that he's that he's a homo, and I just I don't I I think I think that's a lie. I don't I think Truman, and if you know anything about Truman Capote, he was very strange. Hmm. He said a lot of things. I think he said that to get more attention for the novel. Just as I kind of think that Sherwood Anderson says that George Willard is not him to kind of, for just actually just the opposite reason, to kind of detract away from the attention. But I, I, I do think that George Willard is, is Sherwood Anderson. I do. I do. But, you know, 
Uh, depends on like, depends on how much mm. you want to believe the yeah. author or not. So, you know, yeah. What was that, Boo Baker? He was like kind of going to turn as a criminal. <laughs> Say that again. He, he was like going to turn uh, as a criminal. As a like, criminal. Well, he's a uh, he's uh, a mother-in-law. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's um, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be George Willard. That would that would be Wash Williams. But yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's try to get through at least the the first page of um, the thinker. Um, Christoph, let's have you read. Oh wait, what am I doing? Um, read the first two paragraphs for me, Christoph. No problem. The house uh, in the in which said Richmond of Winsburg lived with his mother had been at one time the show place of the town, but when young Seth lived there, its glory had become somewhat the mine. Uh, the hug brick house which bunker with white had built on Bucky Street had uh, overshadowed it. The Richmond place was in little val valley far out at the end of Main Street. Uh, farmers coming into town by a dusty road from the south passed by a grove of walnut trees, skirted uh, the fair ground with its high board fence covered with advertisements and trotted uh, their Horses down through the valley past the Richmond place into town. As much of the country north of and south of Winsburg was devoted to fruit and berry raising. Uh, Seth saw uh, wagon loads of berry pickers, boys, girls, and women going. Uh, women going to the fields in the morning and returning covered with dust uh, in the evening. The chattering crowd with their rude jokes cried out from wagon to wagon sometimes irritated him sharply. He reg regretted that he also could not laugh boisterously shout meaningless uh, joke and make uh, of himself a figure in the endless uh, stream of moving, giggling activity that went up and down the road. Uh, oops. The Richmond house was built of limestone and oval uh, it was said in the village to have become run down, had in reality grown more beautiful with every passing year. Already time had begun a little to color the stone, uh, lending a golden richness to its surface and in the evening or on dark days, touching the shaded places beneath the eaves with uh, wavering patches of browns and blacks. Good. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so, um, so this story, we are introduced to a new character, and his name is. Seth Richmond. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, Seth Richmond, and what is 
What is his family known for? Hmm. What is, from what Christoph just read, do we learn more about Seth or what do we learn the most about? Um, about Sora and where he lives, about <laughs> yeah, about his house, about, about the house, do. yeah, about the house and and what goes on in Weinsberg. So, what is Weinsberg really known for? What is what is a lot of the business that comes out of of Weinsberg? Farmers, farmers. yeah, farmers, yeah, and the, it's the country, you know, the country life. Um, they are known for fruit and berry raising. And um, does Seth really like this? No, because of peoples. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, um, yeah. He, regrets, um, he regrets that he could not laugh boisterously, shout meaningless jokes, and make of himself a figure in the endless stream of moving, giggling activity that went up and down the road. We don't know why yet, but there is a reason for this. And the house, the Richmond house, was the best house in Winesburg until who built a house? Yeah. Richmond. Ba yeah, Banker White. Banker White Banker builds White. this huge brick house that um, kind of overshadows the Richmond place. And people say it runs down year after year, but instead of it becoming run down, what is it really becoming? More beautiful. Yeah, and why? What's it built of? What's it built of? Uh, so limestone. It's built of limestone, and limestone. What happens to it after it after once it starts to age? Fall apart. It does. Uh, it, yeah, and it but it it also the the colors change. Yeah. The yeah. The the colors change, it's, and that's the color, yeah the color of stone. Yeah, the color of stone changes, and that's what's that's what's happening to, uh, to the Richmond house. Um. Nasser, can I have you read um, read the next two paragraphs? Okay. The house had been built by Sith's grandfather, a stone quarry man, and it, together with the stone quarries on Lake Era, 18 miles to the north, had been left to his son. Clarence Richmond, Sith's father. Clarence Richmond, a quiet, patient man, extraordinarily admired by his neighbors, had been killed in a street fight with the editor of a newspaper in Toledo, Ohio. The fight concerned the publication of Clarence Richmond's name, coupled with that of a woman school teacher. And as the dead man had begin, had begun the row by firing up on the editor, the effort to punish the slayer was unsuccessful. After the choir's the choir man's death, it was found that much of the money left to him had been squandered in spe speculation and in insecure investments made through the influence of friends. Left with but a small income, Virginia Richmond had settled down to a retired life in the village and to the, ri to the rising of her son. Although she had been deeply moved by the death of the husband and father, she did not at all believe the stories concerning him that ran about after his death. To her mind, the sensitive boyish man whom all had instinctively loved, was but an unfortunate, a being to find 
for everyday life. You will be hearing all, all sorts of stories, but you are not to believe what you hear. She said to her son, he was a good man, full of, te of tenderness for everyone and should not have tried to be a man of affairs. No matter how much I, w I were to plan and dream of your future, I couldn't imagine anything better for you than that you turn out as good as uh, as good a man as your father. Good. Okay. So the house um, that they live in had been built by Seth's grandfather and had been left to the son. What happened to Seth's father? Uh, he died. Him. Yeah, how did he die? In a street no, fight. Murder. Yeah, he was yeah, he was murdered in a street fight. Why did he get in a fight? What's a publication? Yeah, kind of like a tabloid we kind yeah, of see. Yeah, yeah he was that's... accused of, of basically being with a with a woman school teacher. Having and an so affair. he and having an affair. So he went to fight the editor, but that obviously didn't work out very well. Um, did he leave his wife a lot of money? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, much of the money um, left. Uh, well, um, much of the, well. First of all. A lot of the money that was left after the quarry man's death, which would be the grandfather, the money that was left to the son had been squandered away, basically in bad investments. So then when the son died, that didn't leave much for his his wife or his son as well. So um, who's the mom? What's her name? Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, and... How did she feel about her dead husband? She loved him and admired him. Yeah, she loved That's him. Right. Mm -hmm. She did not believe the story. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah, she she did not believe any of the story um, or any of the subsequent stories that were told about um, about her husband. And who does she encourage to also not believe the stories? His son. Her son. Her son. Her son. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, let's see. I'm actually gonna read um, this last paragraph for you guys, and then we'll we'll close. So, <clears throat> several years after the death of her husband, Virginia Richmond had become alarmed at the growing demands upon her income, and had set herself to the task of increasing it. She had learned stenography and through the influence of her husband's friends got the 